Hello and welcome to this week's script case video. My name is Jamie Oates and I am your host today. In this week's video, we will be taking a look at how we can use the new feature of script case with the new, latest version 9.9, .9, I believe it is, and Google Sheets. Okay, so as you can see from our screen right now, I have here just a form set up and just showing here the Google Sheets API new edition. And here we can then configure the API. So what we're gonna do then is start off with a new project and we will go ahead and start to actually add this API for us. So what we're going to do is we're gonna start off by creating a new project and as you can see i'm using uh probably well some of you can probably tell it's my local version of script case okay now let's see it's timed out already so i need to log in again and then just like that i'm logged straight back into script case okay so i'm going to start off by creating a new project here and what i'll do is create a blank project and i'll just call this uh, gs for google sheets and I'll go next. Now I could of course add some further specifications there, but for the time being, there's really no need. I'll just continue on. And here we have then the option to create or connect to a database. And as some of you for sure know already, Scriptcase connects to multiple versions of databases that are available. I say multiple versions because each of these tends to have updates and then there are multiple versions of them as well. So each of these you can connect to and there is typically always updates with Scriptcase, so even within new connection methods or any anything that's required script case is always on the ball there and you can typically connect without any issues whatsoever now normally we go ahead and create or well connect to a mysql database for a change i'm just going to go ahead and choose here the create sample database sql lite and what this is then going to do is going to then go ahead and just create or add a database for me Okay, a few tables will exist already and we can use that data or we can, of course, go ahead and edit those tables, remove them or add our own SQLite database. Okay, so Scriptcase does provide us also all the editing features or functionalities that you may need to be able to manage that database. Okay, once you get then to this next step, we can then add our languages. Now you can choose to add more languages here if you want to and typically or sometimes we just continue on. I'm going to go ahead and add a, a, an extra few languages here today. So I go Spanish for instance, I can add Spanish in here or any other language that I want to use. And then what Scriptcase will do is then add language keys and variables for all of our tables into the script case language database and from there we can then manage those language keys we can then also reuse them within our applications okay so i'm going to go ahead and then choose next and then we can choose the theme that we want to use so let's go ahead and choose here the sweet golden sand for a change Okay, and I will remove the default blueberry and have here the sweet golden sand as the default theme to use. And of course, there are more themes at the bottom here. We can click this and there are plenty of other themes that choose from. And at the top here, you can actually see a full count of them. And you can see I, locally, I have here 1,822 different types of themes. Now, some of them are from really old versions of script case and of course may not be suitable, but in some cases they are still functional. Okay. And you can of course customize them in any way or shape or form that you please. Okay, so once you've chosen out your theme, you can then go ahead and click here the create button and that will then start to create your project. Now, because we have our database connected and script case has gone ahead and added that for us, if I now go here to form, for instance, and table, I already have some SQLite database tables available for me that I can use or already start to set up my application with and you can see here we have some default tables which would typically be used within a project such as here the categories customers employees uh, orders shippers suppliers and so forth and they all come with their own fields 
So I would go ahead and just choose here the categories, okay? And with that chosen, it already adds here the name for me. And at the top here, I can change the type of form that I want to use. So right now it's a single row, a multiple row, an editable grid and an editable grid view. And if you don't know what they look like, you can always just run up a demo or the samples or even just create a form yourself and just check those options. You can easily make changes within script case without it affecting your applications. So you can always go ahead and just try something out, check a box, see what it looks like and how it affects your application. Okay, so once you've chosen the type of form that you want to run, you have here then also further options. For instance, here the edit fields. Now we can already define here what type of fields we want to have designated to these. So when we create the form, it's already assigned and then following the form creation or generation initially. And then when we come to edit the form, we have then already these specific files already defined. For instance, here the image database, if you'd prefer to have image file name, which would then be for local storage, for instance, on the server. And then of course, you can make that adjustment from here before you create the form, saving some time in many cases. You also have the options here to enable those fields for new, update, and even read only, and if they should be required. Now we can easily just enable those just by checking them or disabling them by removing them, however you please. And on each application, we can also further customize the theme. If I had indicated that I wanted to have two, three, four, or five different themes available for different purposes, for different views, however I please, then on the form itself, I can also customize the type of theme I want to have applied for this form. So we only have one theme available, and that is why now I only have SC9 Sweet Golden Sand, being the default theme I had chosen. Okay, now from here, if I just go ahead and click the Create button, it will go ahead and create my form and also bring it here into edit mode. And from here, I can just then go ahead and make changes to my form application. Now the form is super powerful and can be used in multiple ways. First of all, as you may have noticed, the form is tied to the table, meaning you generate a form on the table, but that doesn't stop you from adding further fields here. So here in the left-hand menu, I have all of the initial form settings. Let me close that up because of course there are so many options and at first it may be a little overwhelming. So just to reduce that, let's just close that up as I've just done now. And we can see in the first panel, we have our form settings. We then have the search settings. We then have the application settings and then the programming settings. Okay, so by default, the form settings is always open. And by default, it is where you would typically start because you have all of the typical options and features that you may want to apply for your form. But for a change, let me start actually from the rear end here. So from the bottom, so from programming. And within programming, we can see here that we have a few options. So it's not so overwhelming straight away and you can we can take our time viewing upwards. So here within programming, we have all the JavaScript methods, the PHP methods, the internal libraries, and the attributes. Now, if you're not sure what each of these are used for, I can highly, highly, highly recommend checking out the internal libraries and the PHP methods, as well as the JavaScript methods, okay? This really opens up the world of form or application creation within Scriptcase. Now, Above that, we have then also application. And within application, we have a settings, the navigation, so how we want the form to react when it moves, messages, how, what types of messages, or if we want to change the message, for instance, uh, global variables. So when we define variables or global variables within our application, we can choose here what happens with them. We have then also the synchronizer table. So if we make any changes within the database, we just click this button here and it will check or verify your form with the database table. And if there are any changes within the database table, they will then also be reflected within the form. In some cases, you may not want that to happen, but 
that is just the way it works. And of course, if you want to hide those fields, you can do so with ease. Okay, so here within the settings, it is quite an important area. We have here all of our document information, the path, the image directory, the language. We can change all of those options that we have globally for our entire project per application, which is super powerful. And at the bottom here, we have then all of the notification settings, as well as the debug options, which we can then enable. And as you see, some of them are here by default enabled. Okay, so going to production, some of those you may want to disable. Now within the navigation, as I said, moving forward, the exit URL we have here, how we want it to be re redirected, if we want to redirect the form to a different uh, location, or if we just want to exit the application, whatever we want to happen, we can make those changes here. And of course the messages, we can then adjust or add our own messages. And as we had used previously the application language, we can very then easily jump here to application languages, check out here our general form or our uh, general language keys that we have. So we first need to create a data dictionary. We don't have a data dictionary created for our current tables, okay? So you would want to do that for your main tables. In this case, the tables that we have that are generated by script case, we would generally want to go ahead and make some changes to those. And then we would come here to data dictionary and they would then add the specific language keys for all of our applications here. But otherwise, because we want to use our language keys in here, we would do so like so. We always start our language key with a lang underscore and then always use the curly brackets. And we can then simply use those here very quickly and very easily within all of our script case applications. Okay, so we have then the global variables. And as I said, we have no global variables defined right now. And if we had some defined, we can actually choose here what we want to uh, happen with those. Uh, global variables, if they are incoming, if they are outgoing, and so forth. And then, of course, we can synchronize our table, and then we have some specific uh, field data here that we can view. Coming up to search, we can then here customize how our form search works. We have all these settings, these search criteria. If we want to have a dynamic search, we simply need to choose here the fields and add them into our form and then they would be displayed within a, a button. It's a really cool feature as well as here the quick search as well as again our search fields because of course our form fields we may want them to handle or display different data than our search fields so we can then customize those if we wanted to. Now by default they will always take on here the form settings. Okay, so within the form settings, we have many options here. And of course, our main topic today is Google Sheets. And that is within here, the export area. So let me zoom in here. So maybe we can see this a little better. Okay, and we have here the export area. And within the export area, we have then all of the export options, such as the Google Sheets, which I had displayed at the beginning of the video. So I'll remove here the export types. But of course, we do also have PDF and print HTML as an export option. So we can also choose those. So here within the form settings, as I was explaining previously, we have all of the main options here. And of course, it's a lot of options. And as I said, when this first opens and you look at this, of course, it can be a little overwhelming. So just reduce it a little bit and we can cut it down. So here at the top, we have our form orientation, which we could have configured previously. And here we have an, a, an example or a demo of what that would look like. Now at the bottom of each of these options, we always have here the advanced settings and clicking that it will take us here to our settings and allow us to make further options. Okay, so that's the same as clicking here on settings. There's no different, it is just a shortcut button. Now, otherwise, when we choose here our different options, we have here a preview of what type of form is then generated. Okay, so we have our single record, our multiple records, our editable grid, as well as our editable grid view. Below that, we have our settings, which we had just jumped to. 
and here we have many options some of these I would generally set as default and talking about defaults when you create your project always remember here at the top project you have here your default values so before generating any of your actual forms maybe you will want to check that out first it will save you a great deal of time and then I will, of course, then apply, in my case, always 100% width here. And that way, give me a full width form, just like so. And then when we have this form, as you see, it's full width now. It would have been like 60% before. And of course, I wanted a full width. And notice, of course, the form orientation, which we have enabled here, the editable grid view. And of course, that makes our form look really nice and clean and tidy really quickly. And of course, one further option I would also apply by default would then also be here within the settings and the vertical alignment top. And that brings then our application in nice and snug within the corners. That's of course, if that's the sort of layout that you like. That's my preference. So that is something I would have then set by default. So then when I generate this form in the first place, I don't have to go and make the default adjustments following that. Okay, so we have here some mobile options. I know I'm covering a lot of this form today and our main topic is the Google API. And the reason why I'm covering the most of this form is because the Google API is just as easy as the majority of options we have within Scriptcase. So instead of spending five minutes on the API, we're going through the form and explaining some of these options for you. If you're not aware of them, then I hope that you learn about them during this video. Otherwise, you can, of course, always skip a little to the end and there you will have then the Google API specifically. But for now, let me jump here into the mobile. Note mobile is one of the new features or latest features not so long ago and the new options have already disappeared. So the new status symbol like we have here next to our export will not always remain there, okay? So they don't stay there for very long and they are then gone. So here within then the mobile options, we can make various mobile adjustments, how we want then the mobile app to function and so forth. We can edit our fields from here and make you know little quick adjustments to where we want them positioned and so forth and just slide them along save that and then that category id now will no longer be displayed it's not needed uh, so i'll just hide it so we have then also fields positioning so when you have too many fields in this edit field the drag and drop is not so functional you can just jump here to fields positioning and just very easily select the fields that you want or as i had here the category id just plonk it back in here into the main page and there it would be again don't forget to click here the save button of course or in my our case i will remove it okay so here then you can just select multiple fields in one go with your control key and clicking them and then just bang gone save and then they would then no longer be displayed within your application okay so just like that we can make really quick field changes and of course if you want to change the field type which is a very important feature within script case the data type is also available here and then when you first have your fields here maybe it's a little easier to make all your selections of the type of field that you want here and then save the form and then when you open up here the fields you may notice that they would be arranged how you had saved it and all of the data types would be, would be applied to all of those fields in one quick go and that would also save you a great deal of time during your development time okay so coming down here we have a unique key here if we don't have one defined in the table then we could maybe define one here if we wanted to so we can also you know customize all of our fields very easily here and make these very quick adjustments and don't forget that i can also combine them if i wanted to by selecting all of them and then adding them and then that would add that as a complete unique long string key so to say which is really cool and really easy to apply here we have then our toolbar we can very easily make adjustments here to our toolbar the positioning of the buttons and and so much more okay so i'm coming down here to google sheets now and i think i will more than likely be skipping the rest 
or maybe I think you want me to continue. So let me just skip past Google Sheets, come down here to SQL. Here in SQL, you have all the SQL settings that you can make or a change. And you, of course, you can change the primary key or set it here if you haven't had it set within your database table. And of course, also add a where clause or order by, change the connection and more here for SQL. For the sorting, you can make various adjustments to the sorting of the fields for when you have the lists, it may be good to apply. The group labeling, you can also add various group labeling here if you wanted to. The procedures, you can change or enable specific procedures here if you wanted to. So that enable in insert procedure, add a name, add then some parameters in here. Now, of course, you also have events down here which are super powerful. And of course, procedures and events, they're not really the same thing. So of course, you may want to have events loading instead of procedures. So depending on what you're really doing. Now the procedures here, you have the various events on the form when it loads and on validation and so much more. And then here on the right, you have lots of code here and samples, check them out. You'll learn a great deal if you don't know nothing at all. And if you do know something, then you will find it very easy to figure out. Okay. Otherwise, I tell you, if you don't know anything about coding, you don't need to know coding to be able to create great forms in script case. You have everything here on the right hand side to be able to quickly and easily apply some great business dynamics that you want to have within your form. Okay. So we then also have here our dependencies. We can add custom dependencies to this form if we wanted to. I can just add new dependency and say this uh, data is related to another table or another field and I can apply it to this form and just like that we have you know, some relationships going on here, custom relationships within our form. We have also then some security features here that we can apply and make changes to or adjust on an application level or globally, okay? You have your log as well, your application links, so you can add custom links to the form, all of the fields which you can then customize, the layout options, so you can add pages, blocks, tabs, you lay out the page just about any type of way you like. You have header of footers. And of course, when you start using the libraries, then of course you can use the header libraries or the HTML libraries, should I say. And then you can very easily have custom headers within all of your applications, which then also become part of your applications. Within the Ajax events, it's pretty much the same thing as events, but for Ajax, of course, but here we can tie this to a specific field. So very easily I can say when the category ID changes, Okay, I want an event to happen and then using the macros and so forth, I can create some magic. Okay, so here within buttons, I can add custom buttons within this form. So instead of just using a form as a form, you can also use it as a, a semi, semi data form where you're only displaying data. And remember, one of the most important powerful features of all of the applications within Scriptcase is that they are fully dynamic. Okay, so instead of having one grid for, sorry, instead of having Instead of having one grid for every single view, you can have one grid for all views and just very easily within the event, customize how or what you want displayed. And of course, you may have a little more code to do, but it really reduces the footprint and also, you know, makes a much more powerful application. Okay, so we have here also the master detail forms. If you don't know anything about that, there's lots of videos on this. With that, we add extra forms within this form. It's a great feature. Now, you don't have to just include forms. You can include grids as well, okay? As long as then the ideas, the relationships are working. And just like that, you can then add an extra table in here. You also have many to many relationships if you want to have those specific features where you then click on a little search box, it pops up with a, another grid and then you select the data that way. That's one way of doing it. But there are also these really other features such as the Ajax events and other, other functionalities where you can also add features like that without even using the many to many relationships, which is really cool.
Okay, so that's pretty much all of the other features here within the form. And now let's get to the main topic of today's video, which is of course, Google Sheets. -na -na -na. I don't know if I should do that sound, but anyway, I thought it would be good. Anyway, okay, so we have here within Google Sheets, our settings, and here we have the API profile. Okay, so here I first of all need to have an API set, or if I choose here the refresh button, it would actually refresh one if I have one defined. So if I click on edit, let me see, and edit opens up here my APIs that I have available. Okay, and I just have some public APIs here. I have uh, a couple user APIs and I first need to create one for Google Sheets. Now I have already created one, so I could actually go ahead here and add that. Um, but first, I want to show you how you can get your API, okay? So just in case you're not sure how to get your API in the first place. So let me come out of that and quickly jump to the other page. Okay, so here I have now my console.cloud.google.com forward slash APIs forward slash or APIs, but APIs forward slash credentials. Okay, and here I have then all of my API credentials and my IDs and everything for uh, Google Cloud. And you can see at the right here, I have already downloaded two APIs and I have them all displayed here. And you can see I have one here called SC Sheets. Well, maybe you can't because I should maybe zoom in a little bit so that you can see better. Okay, so here I can then go ahead and click here the Create Credentials option, and we need to select here the OAuth Client ID. And I choose that, and because of course I'm using this locally, I need to choose here the Desktop App. Okay, and by choosing that, it will then give me a name and then I can go ahead and click create. And then it will send me this authorization key I have up here, as well as some other keys. Now, if I go ahead, I'll just go ahead and click create, why not? So I'll click create and there I have my client ID, my client secret, and then if I click on this, it will then download my um, code here. Okay, so the JSON code. All right, so once you've done that, you will then have also that listed and available here. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete that. Okay, so that doesn't exist no more. I have one already available here, which I had created previously. Okay, so once you have created your API, then you can jump back into Scriptcase. Now, if you're not sure how to open this file, because if you just click on open, it'll more than likely say, ah, there's no file to open this type of file. Just click on here on the show folder and then right click on the file. So if I grab my file here, here I have my files. Okay. I just right click on one of those and then I can open with, okay. And then just choose notepad and then notepad will open that. And then that will give you a nice long key, which you can then add within the script case API. Okay, so back within script case, we can then come here and add new. I can then choose the type of mode where I want this. And typically I would want this on project. So it's related to the project I'm working on, or in this case, maybe user, or of course I could go public and then it's available for everyone who uses script case. Okay, now I have here then the gateway that I want to choose. And if I scroll down here and I can't really see it because it's just off the screen, but then I have here reports, which is green. And then it says Google Sheets. Okay, so I'm sorry that's off there. If I actually zoom out, there we go, Google Sheets. Let me zoom back in again. There we go, that works better. Okay, so we just choose that, Google Sheets, and then we need to add here an application name. I need to add a name up here also for script case, and then add an app name for my Google app. Okay, so let's say here, for instance, SCGS, I'll show. Okay, and then I'll add a name here. I'll give it the same name, and then I need to copy my API key in there, and then I can click here, the auth, authorization code, So when I come here on authorize, okay, choose then 
the account that you want to authorize with. Because I'm using it locally, I need to enable that here and then choose or check here the options boxes that we have available there. Click continue and then we have here the authorization code. Now this I can then go ahead and manually copy or click here the copy button and then that I can then paste here within the script case API. We can go ahead and save that now. And now when I come here to form categories and choose now Google Shoots uh, and choose then Google Sheets. You've got mail. And then choose here the form cat. Let's just add that, add those fields, save that. And then I can then go ahead and save the form. If there are any errors with the API, you have them displayed here as we had previously. Okay, so in this case, the API has been authorized and the connection with Google has been created. And now when I go ahead and run this form, those datas will then also be added into a Google Sheet. So I can save that. The data has been modified. I'll save that also. And then what I can do then, of course, is access my Google uh, Sheets. So I log into my Google Sheets and I have now here today added a form cat and here we have then the fields from this form. Okay, so I can go ahead then and add it or edit these fields here and use that available here within here. So if I go here, form cat, and that is the form we have here, form underscore cat, and save that again. Oh, this is a different again. Okay, so I'll save that again. And let's go ahead and run. We can add a new field. And say produce. Um, and here, for instance, we can say again, fruit. And we can add an image if we wanted to save that. I have missing here the category ID, which is a required field for this form. So in that case, we would need to, of course, adjust here the form. Okay, so let's add here the edit fields, add here the ID. She says it's a required field. So let me save that again, run the form again. Okay, and if I go ahead and ID eight, add new. And next one's then nine. Just add seafood as well. Let's say fish, save that. Okay, and now when I come here to my Google Sheets, I now have ID nine, seafood, as well as fish, all added into my Google Sheet application. Let's zoom that in here. I think it's so small all the time. No, and I'm sorry, I can't zoom. It's not zooming in at all. Oh, there we go. Okay, so there we have then the fields now also added and synchronized with our form that we have very quickly and easily generated within Scriptcase. And of course, the video would have been over much sooner if I wouldn't have gone over all of the other details. So as you see, that's very easy to apply. So let me just show that one more time here within Google Sheets. We add our API. To add the API, we come here to Tools, API, and then that then opens up here the API window. And here we then have a collection of APIs. Typically, that isn't available. If you don't have any, then you just need to choose here, Add New. And Scriptcase comes with many APIs that you can connect to, okay? So Google Sheets is not the only one. You have also Google Authentication, Dropbox, Braintree, PayPal, Twilio, uh, the list goes on, okay? And more always added, which is great. Okay, so thank you very much for watching this week's video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And of course, check out the webinar where we go over the video and of course, well, the content of this week's webinar, should I say, because I will basically be going over the same things of what I do within the video, plus sharing a few extra little tips here and there. And of course, answering some of your questions that you have during the live session. 
So thank you very much for watching. Have a great weekend and catch you all soon.